So let's talk about simplifying square roots and cube roots in your calculator. So I've got a few of those problems going on right here. We can see this first one I have says, make sure your calculator is in math print mode and then simplify and I ask you to do the square root of 60. Now, just a real quick hint at what's to come. Look down at number two. Number two says, to do the square root of 60 again. You might be thinking, well, what in the heck? Why am I doing the square root of 60 two different times? Well, much like with fractions, how you can take things that you don't want to divide, like let's say uh, one half is, one way to think about it is that is one of one divided by two. But you know, we just could leave it as a fraction, one half, or we could go through, do the division, get a decimal answer, 0. 0.5. Division has two different possible answers very frequently. We can get fractions or we can get uh, decimals when we divide. Same thing with square roots. We can get two different possible answers. We can get a decimal approximation or we can get an exact answer also known as a simplified radical. So I have some clues here that number one wants an exact answer. Uh, one it says just simplify. No language about rounding my answer. Also this equal sign uh, says that I'm expecting what to know what this is exactly equal to. So anytime you want an exact answer, a really good idea is for you to be in math print mode in your calculator. So let's go check out how to do that. Okay, so here's my little TI 30 XS multi-view simulator. This is very similar to what you'll have on the GED. Um, th it'll be a on-screen option like this, and you can use it like this on the GED, but I highly recommend that you just have one in person so you can practice on it. So let's practice. So what you're going to want to do first is make sure you're in math print mode. So let's hit the mode button. And you can see here is my mode screen. And notice that the word math print on my screen is already black. So my calculator is already in math print mode. But what if yours was not? All you would do is use this arrow key here. Here's how you arrow around on the screen with this big round gray key here. So I'm going to go down to that last line and over to the word math print and then I'll press enter to select it and that's how I make sure I'm in math print mode. Now how do I get out of the screen? There's actually two ways. You can press second quit uh, but the easiest way is just to press clear and you'll leave the screen. And there you are. Now I know that I'm in math print mode and ready to get a simplified radical for an answer. So notice that the square root key is actually in green, um, mid middle left of your calculator, right above x squared. Anytime you want to use any of the green functions on the GED calculator, you need to hit this green second button. So I'm going to hit the green second button so now that I can get my square root up here. And it should look like this with no parentheses if you're in the right mode. And then I'm going to hit 60 and enter and you'll see that it gives me a simplified radical answer. It doesn't give me a decimal approximation. It does as much of the square rooting as it can and then leaves the rest that can't be square rooted without decimals inside the house. It very much reminds me of fractions. That house is actually called a radical, but inside the radical. So it very much reminds me of fractions. So I just got a uh, exact answer or a simplified radical. Now I do really want to show you guys the quick convert button. You don't necessarily need it for this problem, but what if you got this kind of answer and that's not what you wanted? There is a quick convert button right here above the enter key. So you could see this in both the simplified form and the decimal form. And we can see that 2 square root of 15 is about 7.7. .7. But you can see it's a long, ugly, nasty decimal. That's why mathematicians prefer it as a simplified radical. So let's go back to our quiz here. So the answer that I should have selected here for number one is the simplified to a square root of 15. Awesome. Now let's look at question two. Question two said, make sure your calculator is in classic mode. This time I want it in classic mode. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth. Well, why am I asking you to flip to classic mode? Classic mode behaves more like you guys' um, phones or the old-fashioned calculators we're used to. Almost always spits out a decimal approximation. And if you see here, I've got a lot of clues that I'm expecting a dance decimal answer here. One thing, it's Says round your answer to the nearest hundredth. That's decimal language. We're talking decimal places. I also noticed this little wavy equal sign. See it instead of a regular equal sign is that wavy equal sign. I'm expecting an approximation. My answer will be rounded. And then I can see here that these numbers are decimals uh, in the multiple choice. So lots of clues that I would like to be in classic mode. So coming back to my calculator, 
let's clear what we did before here. Uh, so uh, we just press clear right here on our screen. Now, a super nice thing about this calculator, if you clear something by accident and you press up arrow, it's still there. <laughs> but we'll clear it. Okay. So let's go back to our mode this time. And instead of being in math print mode, this time I do want to be in classic mode. I want the decimal approximation type answers. So I'm going to go ahead, arrow over the word classic until it's blinking black on classic. Press enter to select and again, clear to get out of that screen. And now I should be able to type the square root of 60 again, but this time I'll get the decimal answer right from the start. So again, square root is in green. So you're going to want to hit the second button and then the square root. And then this time notice it pops up with the parentheses. Looks a little weird. But that's okay, it's still a square root button, and it really doesn't matter if, if you leave the parentheses open or if you close it, but good practice, I'll close it. And press enter. And you can see it goes straight to the decimal approximation. About 7.7, .7, let's see, that's a four, so I'll round it, I'll call it about 7.75. So let's come back to our quiz, uh, there's 7.75, wonderful. So it's not only square roots that might appear on the GED, you might also see some cube roots. That's what this is right here. It looks just like a square root. You still have that little check mark house known as a radical. Um, but here, let me blow it up bigger so you can hopefully see that little bitty index, that number in the check mark, the three. That's what tells us this is a cube root and not a square root. Oh man, I want to get it even bigger. Let's see here. There you go, nice and huge. So we're looking for the cube root of 32. Okay, so let's get back to our calculator here. And it actually won't matter if you are in math print or classic mode uh, for cube roots. One thing I've noticed about a TI-30 is it always seems to give a decimal approximation when it comes to cube roots. To put a cube root in, it's super important that you put the index, the number inside the little check mark of the radical first. So I'm going to put that three in first. Okay. Now, cube roots are right above square roots. The the in green it says the xth root. That's what we want. And so I'm going to go ahead and press uh, the second button because it's in green, and then pick up that xth root, and I type in 32. Okay. So the cube root of 32, press enter and it gives me 3.17. Now really quickly I just want to switch modes for you to see how that looks in math print mode because it looks slightly different when you're typing it in even though it gives you the same answer. So I'm going to arrow over the word math print press enter to select clear out of that screen but I'm going to do the third root again. So again we type in the three three and then we need that X root button so it's in green so I got to press second and then this little carrot here and we see when you're in that wonderful math print mode it looks like a mathematician would write it so sometimes students prefer to be here because you can see that little three floats up in the sky looks like it's inside the check mark and press 32, but in the end it gives me the same answer, 3.17. So even though the way you input it when you're in classic mode versus math print mode varies for cube root, both of them give you a decimal approximation, which is a little weird because it's not consistent because it's not the same with square root, right? Square root sometimes gave us a decimal approximation, sometimes gave us an exact answer, uh, depending on what mode we're in. Done with this. If you have any questions about how to use your TI-30XS to deal with square and cube roots, let me know.